Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. In my previous video about Ellingham diagrams, I had explained about certain silent features of Ellingham diagrams. In this video, I'll be explaining about the applications of Ellingham diagrams in order to select certain reducing agents to reduce metal oxides. Now coming on to the first example. Here, one thing what we need to remember is the metal oxide which is placed below when compared to the metal oxide which is above in the Ellingham diagram, the metal oxide which is placed below is more stable or in other words, the metal oxide which has higher negative value of delta G0 is more stable when compared to the metal oxide with less negative delta G0 value. So in this diagram, it is very clear that aluminum oxide which is placed below when compared to chromium oxide is more stable when compared to this chromium oxide. So first application in selecting the reducing agent is that the element which forms the most stable metal oxide can act as a reducing agent for the less stable metal oxide. So among these two metal oxides, as I've told, aluminum oxide is stable. So aluminum can be used to reduce the less stable chromium oxide. So here what happens in this diagram, it is very clear. We can select the reducing agent for chromium oxide. That is aluminum, which is forming the more stable aluminum oxide can act as a reducing agent to reduce this chromium oxide. So now how well is this efficiency of reducing power? The gap between these two lines, if it is higher, then higher is the reducing power of this element. So this element can be anything in the Ellingham diagram. Just we need to see the positions of their metal oxides. So let us see why this aluminum can act as a reducing agent in terms of thermodynamic concepts. So this process is called as thermite process in which aluminum is used as a reducing agent to reduce the oxide of chromium. So here we can see this is the reaction that is taking place where aluminum and the chromium oxide reacts with each other because aluminum is used as a reducing agent. So reducing agent, what does it do? It will remove the oxygen from the metal oxide. So what happens here is aluminum gets oxidized, whereas chromium oxide gets reduced to chromium. So aluminum gets oxidized to form aluminum oxide and chromium oxide gets converted to chromium or in other words, chromium oxide is reduced to chromium. So during this reaction, we can see that the product side has aluminum oxide. Here, aluminum oxide is formed as a product. So in this diagram, it is very clear that aluminum oxide is more stable when compared to that of chromium oxide. So in this reaction, the less stable chromium oxide is a reactant and the product is the more stable aluminum oxide. So whenever the product is more stable, this reaction is more favorable because the product formed is more stable. So this reaction is thermodynamically feasible and hence this reaction has delta G value of negative. So since delta G value for this reaction is always negative, this reaction is thermodynamically feasible and hence aluminum can act as a reducing agent for chromium oxide. So next coming on, the next example, whenever there is an intersection of lines here in the Ellingham diagram, it indicates oxidation reduction equilibrium. So again in this Ellingham diagram, we can identify whether this carbon or coke, whether this coke can act as a reducing agent to reduce zinc oxide. So these two lines are intersecting. So if you just observe this temperature here, at, let me go to the next slide. So here at 1000 degrees Celsius, it is very clear that here there is an equilibrium between oxidation and reduction. So below 1000 degrees Celsius, if we see that is below this intersection point, if we just observe the line for the zinc oxide lies below when compared to the line of the carbon monoxide formation, this line corresponds to the 
formation of carbon monoxide whereas this line corresponds to the formation of zinc oxide so now i am speaking about the temperature below 1000 degree celsius so here below 1000 degree celsius the zinc oxide is here zinc oxide and the upper one is for carbon monoxide so zinc oxide is more stable when compared to carbon monoxide here so we know that at a particular temperature or in the Ellingham diagram when we consider the element of the more stable metal oxide can act as a reducing agent for the higher metal oxide or the metal oxide which is placed above it so here since in below 1000 degrees celsius zinc oxide line is below the carbon monoxide line so here this coke cannot be used as a reducing agent to reduce zinc oxide so what happens above 1000 degrees celsius so you can easily observe here so this line is for formation of zinc oxide so here coke reacts with oxygen to form carbon monoxide the upper line corresponds to formation of zinc oxide so it is very clear that above 1000 degrees celsius carbon monoxide is more stable when compared to zinc oxide this line is for zinc oxide so what happens here is the element which is forming the more stable oxide can act as a reducing agent to reduce the less stable oxide so here we know that above 1000 degrees celsius zinc oxide is less stable so this coke can act as a reducing agent to reduce zinc oxide but here there is a condition that this temperature has to be maintained above 1000 degrees celsius so coke can act as a reducing agent for zinc oxide but the condition is above 1000 degrees celsius so what is the reaction that is taking place above 1000 degrees celsius so here we can see zinc oxide plus coke so here coke is undergoing oxidation whereas zinc oxide is undergoing reduction so we get zinc oxide is getting converted to zinc and coke is getting converted to carbon monoxide so here it is very evident in the product side we have carbon monoxide so above 1000 degrees celsius carbon monoxide is more stable when compared to that of the zinc oxide so the formation of more stable product is highly feasible when compared to the formation of less stable zinc oxide so this reaction is feasible or this reaction is thermodynamically feasible so we can say that zinc oxide can be reduced by coke above 1000 degrees celsius one more example of the similar kind where this carbon monoxide whether it can act as a reducing agent for reducing hematite ore so hematite we know that the formula is fe2o3 so again by just checking the ellingham diagrams we can decide whether this carbon monoxide can reduce hematite ore or not again here there is the intersection point for these two lines so below the intersection point and above the intersection point we have to just compare and then decide whether carbon monoxide can be used as a reducing agent for reducing hematite ore so here if you just see above the intersection point carbon monoxide reacts with oxygen to give carbon dioxide so carbon dioxide is more stable when come here carbon dioxide is the stability of carbon dioxide is less stable when compared to hematite ore okay so hematite ore is more stable because it is placed below carbon dioxide but below the intersection point if we see here this is the line for carbon dioxide so carbon dioxide is more stable when compared to hematite ore because this line corresponds to hematite ore so since carbon dioxide is more stable here so carbon monoxide because the element that is forming the more stable oxide can be used as a reducing agent to reduce less stable oxide so here below the intersection point fe2o3 is this is the line corresponding to fe2o3 or in other words fe2o3 is less stable when compared to carbon dioxide 
So carbon monoxide can act as a reducing agent to reduce Fe2O3 below this intersection point. So we have this reaction Fe2O3 which is reacting with carbon monoxide to reduce this hematite ore to iron and carbon monoxide gets oxidized to CO2. So this formation of carbon dioxide that is below the intersection point of 983 Kelvin here it is more favorable because we can see here the line for the formation of carbon dioxide lies below that of hematite. So the formation of more stable oxide that is more stable carbon dioxide is favored here below the intersection point and hence CO carbon monoxide can act as a reducing agent to reduce hematite O. So finally based on the Ellingham diagrams of oxides we can identify which is the more stable oxide which is the less stable oxide and so on. So we can just make a, an arrangement of the metal oxides based on their positions in the Ellingham diagrams. So it is very clear Ag2O which is placed at the topmost position in the Ellingham diagram it is least stable. So we know that the metal oxide which is placed below in the Ellingham diagram is more stable when compared to the metal oxide which is placed above. So here Ag2O is placed at the topmost position so it is the least stable oxide among all these oxides which are given. Same way magnesium oxide has its position in the lowest position in the Ellingham diagram so it is the most stable oxide when compared to all these oxides which are given here or in other words in simple way if I have to tell whenever the metal oxide is placed below in the Ellingham diagram or in other words if the delta G of formation of these metal oxide is more is more negative here you can see here it is highly negative minus 1100 whereas for uh, Ag2O it is very it is less negative that is maybe minus 50 or something like that so we can see highly negative value of delta G naught for the formation of metal oxide makes it more stable. So these are some applications of Ellingham diagrams which are very useful in metallurgy. That is we can select the proper reducing agent in order to reduce certain metal oxides. So we can also decide the stability of different metal oxides just by seeing the Ellingham diagrams. So these are a few important applications of Ellingham diagrams. If you like this video then hit the like button and also if you have not subscribed to my channel subscribe it thank you for watching the video